to get in the ring with Mike Tyson was like a dream come true for me, you know. I don't see um, Jay Paul going the distance now. I wouldn't be back at Jay Paul, but hey, anything can happen boxing. Right, Kevin. So um, tell me, what, what is it like fighting Mike Tyson? You went in the ring with him. You, you went toe-to-toe. I mean, mm-hmm. it was a brawl. It was a battle. It was a fight. Talk to me about what it was like getting in the ring with him. To get in the ring with Mike Tyson was like a dream come true for me, you know. Because when I was a kid growing up, uh, I idolised him and Muhammad Ali. And, you know, just uh, actually, you know, getting in the ring with him was like, wow, you know, like a surreal moment. It was like um, the Cinderella story. If you ever watched it, James J. Braddock, you know, you're fighting Mike Tyson. And, um, you know, I remember growing up and... Um, I boxed in the Olympics for Ireland in 1992. I didn't win, but I was in the biggest games in the world. And um, I remember uh, after the Olympics, I told my fashion. And uh, I remember I said to my father, I'd love to fight Tyson one day. And he says, you never know, maybe it might happen. You know, and sure enough, years later, my father passed away and uh, everybody was putting something in his pocket for luck in the coffin. And, I had the Olympic medal and I put it in my father's pocket, you know, in the for luck, in the, in his, uh, beside his heart and his pocket and his jacket. And uh, sure enough, years later, I'm in the ring with the most feared man in the world, you know. <laughs> um, what, was there any, I mean, was there any trepidation taking this fight? I mean, you'd seen what he had done to previous fighters before. Um, obviously, his reputation was, you know, as, as as a knockout specialist. I mean, and, you know, before that, he was quite a violent man outside of the ring and inside the ring. Was there any sort of thought in your mind that you wouldn't take the fight? Oh, no. Like, uh, I remember I was offered a few times before the fight him, you know. Um, once with Frank Maloney, I think when uh, Peter McNeely fought him that time, I think, Frank Maloney was offered, but he said he didn't want to get me killed, you know. I'm <laughs> sure he said something like that, but I'd have fought him because I have no fear, you know, when you're a fighter, you're a fighter, you know, it's in your blood, you know, and uh, it's just like a dream. And then another time before uh, I was offered, like, I don't know, it was crazy money, like, a, I don't know, it was like a half million to fight him uh, when Danny Williams fought him, you know, and uh Everybody was trying to get more money and greedy and this and other. I said, I just want to get in the ring with them. And then the last time I happened to fight in a, on an ESPN show out here, it was a main event in Foxwoods. And I knocked this kid out, you know, it wasn't in the best shape, but I knocked this kid out. And, um, and then I went sparring some kid, uh, Calvin Brock. He, nobody would spar this kid because he was knocking people out and, uh, I'm not afraid of people knocking people out. I get knocked out a few times too, but, <laughs> but uh, I went in and uh, I dropped this kid in, in, in a spar and he's rolling around the ring. Oh, and I see the bruised ribs. So I said, oh, Jesus, I better not hit him there again because uh, I'll end up not making a few bucks a week, you know. But uh, <laughs> sure enough, I got the call and uh, I fight Mike Tyson and uh, all they were offering was. Uh, Hundred and fifty thousand. I didn't even say I just said just say thank you very much. I <laughs> appreciate the fight. And sure enough, the next day or two I was down in Washington DC, I signed a contract and I met Mike Tyson and I says to him, uh, man, you're a legend, man. This is this is unbelievable. Thanks a million for the fight. You know, it was like a dream come true and uh, and it's never really on until you're actually in the ring and the bell goes, you know what I mean? Because you never know what happens between then and you know, and uh, it's just so exciting because um like, I'd be knocked out, you know, it wasn't a great shape, I'd be knocked out, and uh, it didn't stop me boxing, but um, what do you call it, uh, just to feel Mike Tyson's power, you know, that was 19 years ago, and I still feel his power today, you know, <laughs> it's like, holy <laughs> he hit you one side of the body, and you could feel something moving on the other side, and when you're talking about him being crazy and all that, you know, 100%, he, once he's in the ring, he's an animal. He wants you out of there, no matter what. Like, like I remember he hit me so hard in the sixth round, I thought there was leprechauns playing drums in my head, and I grabbed a hold of him, and I said, is that all you got? You know, I was hoping it's all you got. And then, <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, he, uh, 
he was trying to break my arm, and people don't realize, and I'm not sure what round it was, he tried to bite my nipple off. He, I can remember vividly the, the cruciating pain, and I pulled my chest away from my nipple away from him, and I remember slipping off his mouthpiece, you know. And I'm just glad he had his mouthpiece in him. Like, if he didn't have his mouthpiece, then it might have been a different story. It might have been, you know, he might have bit Evander Halliday's ear off, but he would have beat a big Irishman's nipple off, you know. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> And if you actually see him in the fight, he's biting his gloves. You know what I mean? Yeah. The man is like, you know, and you know, and you give up because I always said a bigger, stronger man would be the smaller, stronger man. But Tyson uh, on the day, like I had eight weeks hard training, and I was in the with Goody Patronetti, you know, and uh, people don't realize that. You know, dreams happen. You know that was my fairy tale story. You know, my we claim the fame in America, I beat the most feared man in the world, and yeah, you know, everybody says, like wouldn't really know my name or that. But sure enough, you know, like since Tyson's fighting again, who was this Kevin McBride guy that beat Mike Tyson, the Irish guy? You know, and uh, sure enough, it was me. But yeah. like, I'm just a you know a journeyman. Like, you know, I, I love boxing. You know, and thanks to you, you. Keeping it alive, and you know, <laughs> they're, they're, even Jay Paul and Mike Tyson, you know, even he's fifty-eight, he's still very, very dangerous. Like you know, people don't realize that um, that's the last thing that leaves you. And, and you do, do if you believe in it, don't believe in it. You have to watch a fight like Foreman Michael Moore. You know what happened there? Foreman, you know, was getting beat up. It was you know going slogging away. The next thing he landed that beauty on the uh, what do you call him, Michael Moore, and lights out. And mm. as far as my prediction of the fight with uh, Jay Paul, no, fair juice me he's got, he got, you know what, to get into the ring with the most feared man in the world. And he says he's still the most feared man in the world, but I don't think he realized he's like, it's a level, like, you know, even at 58, he said, Mike Tyson is dangerous at 80, 80 years old, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, good luck to him, you know. That's all yeah. I would say about that. Uh, he said afterwards, after the fight, he said the hunger had gone. His 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 drive had gone in boxing, and 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 that more or less, mm. you know. Did you see him quitting after your fight? Did you think that that was going to be the end for him? You know, I seen like when I fought him. You know, he says the hunger was gone. Hunger, was... <laughs> he's in there. He wanted to win every round. He was trying to kill me, man. People don't realize he tried to break my arm, he headbutt me. Like he was yeah. in there to do damage. It's not. It was done because I I beat him physically. Beat him like you, you know. People say I ah, pushed him or whatever that round. But I was. If you seen before that I was catching some uppercuts and I, I was sending him. I could feel it like you know like the energy sapping from him. You know what I mean? And then yeah. Then then it was more of like a lean on him and he fell and. Like, uh, fair enough, when he was sitting on the ground and I'm walking by him, I was thinking of picking him up and I says, nah. <laughs> I think I'd let him sit down for another while because let him think about it because he's dangerous, man. He'd probably bite you on the way up. You never know who <laughs> hits you on the way up. But, um, because once you're in the ring and, and uh, like, then he, I seen he said to the Jeff Fennig, uh, after the fight watching it, you know, like, uh, he said, like, I'm done, you know. I remember a reporter said to me after the fight, you know, uh, what was what was going through your head before the bell went? Can you imagine me as a kid growing up? I had legs and uh, Mike Tyson, and, and then uh, what do you call being in the ring with him? And then you're looking face to face. So after him saying so, he's going to cut me up like a fish, and he's going to do this and do that, or whatever he's going to do. But uh, me saying, uh, I said to the reporter. You know what, honestly, what was going through my head? What the hell did I get myself into? <laughs> this guy, you know, he's a pure, like, there's some kind of, he's a, he's a pure animal, you know, it's just like, yeah. and, and in a good way, like, he's a legend, you know, and, and, yeah. you know, I, I kind of felt sad to beat him, but I was happy, you know, and, and it was like a surreal moment, it was like a dream come true, and, uh, mm. you know, people don't realize, like I said, I met Muhammad Ali and afterwards, and, you know, and, like, I remember them, saying to me and or Tyson was in the press conference after so oh, I didn't want to lose this caliber of fighters I didn't want to lose do this do that and then somebody whispered in the ear and said uh, Muhammad Ali's leaving he won't say goodbye to me because his daughter fought in the undercard 
And I jumped up and I went out and I gave Muhammad Ali a big hug and a kiss. And I said, This is the greatest night of my life, far as boxing is concerned. I says, I'm after meeting the legend, beating the legend, and I'm meeting the greatest all the time. And Muhammad Ali, I swear to God, he threw a few punches at me and he goes, I'm the greatest, you're the latest. You know? <laughs> you know, you know, just a feeling at like that moment, you know, and then. Um, Thing we, the thing is, you so you beat Tyson, and then you've got almost like an expectation on your shoulders after you beat Tyson. How did how did that feel? Did you feel then a pressure after beating Tyson to then go on and and and, and win more fights and, and and establish your name more, or, or did it matter at that point? Uh, you know? listen, I didn't give it. <laughs> no, be honest, with you, I didn't really care about you know boxing. Beautiful sport, I love it a bit. And sure enough, as a kid, you love to win a world title. And mm. I was so cl close to fighting Johnny Ruiz for the world title, and that would have been the pinnacle. It would have been so nice to get a chance to fight him. But the iron was hot for a while, you know. And then it goes cold, and then that's it. And you, you, you stick. It's like chess, you know. You, you have to be at the right place at the right time, and then. And sure enough, I lost fights after that because you don't have that kind of hunger, you know what I mean? But when you were fighting Tyson, Jesus, uh, if you didn't train before, you surely train now. And I know Jake Paul looks like he's training and he looks like he's taking it serious. Mm. They ain't no joke, like in boxing, it's boxing serious stuff, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I don't know, there's just uh, like it didn't happen for me winning the world title, but. I did something that uh, is a dream, you know, man, for me to come through. It's like winning a world title, beating Mike Tyson. So, yeah. Say I didn't win a world title, but I beat a man that won world title. So yeah. it's good, you know, man. And, uh, cool. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. and everybody's going to say, oh, Mike Tyson was all done. Man, that's what they were saying back then. But he ain't all done. They spot like um, Roy Jones Jr., you know, mm. did 10 rounds or whatever. And, very, very, very good. I know he's a few years older now, but you know, even Ray Jones was like, Wow, with the power he has is unreal. Like, so he hasn't lost the power. And, and then, yeah, 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 he looks in great shape. So, and so does uh, Jay Paul, but I don't see the, um, Jay Paul going the distance now. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be back at Jay Paul, but. Hey, anything can happen in boxing, you know. This is the view of the sport, you know.